Popular Mechanics Magazine, Volume 98, December of 1952. This month's cover. Christmas is a time for many things. The sparkling gaiety of the special tree and the deep rich tones of church chimes ringing out the age-old hymns. Best of all, perhaps, Christmas is a time when members of the family draw quietly together again, when a good warm feeling goes with every family activity. Our cover shows a scene that will soon be duplicated in thousands of American homes in one way or the other. Dad and son are working as a team on a special project, one they can't seem to find time for during the rest of the year. It could be almost any project, but in this case, it's something extra special. A 36-inch model of that new queen of the seas, the SS United States on page 182. This is the first of a series of articles on building this beautiful model. The series includes complete plans for the ship, from the keel to the crown of the super smokestacks. It's a project well worthy of any father-son team. Why not launch it during the holiday season? In this issue, for the Craftsman, 36-inch model of the SS United States. Part 1. Model makers throughout the world have been eager to start modeling the new speed queen of the seas, the SS United States. To fulfill their requests, the editors of Popular Mechanics commissioned Mr. Robert G. C. Fee, model engineer at the Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company, builders of the actual ship, to prepare the necessary plans Popular Mechanics Herewith is proud to present the first in a series of exclusive construction articles on building a 36-inch scale model of America's mighty superliner. A blue ribbon winner in her maiden Atlantic crossings, the United States established a record-breaking eastward run of three days, 10 hours, and 40 minutes, knocking some 10, 10 hours running time between New York and Southampton at an unheard of speed of 41 land miles per hour. Combining aluminum with steel to help reduce her weight and increase her speed, the United States weighs some 30 gross tons less than her famous British rivals, the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth. While built in a record-breaking time of only 1,031 days from some 1,200,000 blueprints, the combined man hours were enough to construct 6,000 average size homes. You have a choice of building a waterline model as pictured at the top of the page or a keel model as detailed in the plans. This model to be described includes the entire hull, but if a waterline model is preferred, it's a simple matter to omit the lower half of the two-part hull and work from the waterline up. In either case, the completed model is mounted on a finished baseboard and keel type model being supported by two brass turnings. While the waterline model is screwed to the base, after acquainting yourself with the general construction of the model, begin by drawing a full size, three templates required to lay out the lines of the hull. Namely, the profile, deck, and waterline. These are presented one half actual size, with important contour lines being shown on the squares for easy enlargement. Only half patterns are actually required of the dock and waterline templates, as they may be flipped over on each side of the center lines to draw the complete outline. Make the templates of fairly stiff cardboard and strive to maintain the same sweeping lines as shown in the half size patterns. For reference in positioning the templates on the block, draw the water lines as well as the station lines on the templates and letter each one. Full-size patterns of the templates, ready for tracing, are available for those who do not wish to make their own. The blank block from which the hull is carved consists of two separate blocks. Use sugar pine for these, and if necessary, build up each one to the required thickness for two, from two or more pieces. A resin-type glue is recommended in gluing the pieces together, and it's best to clamp the work. When the glue has dried, the two blocks are aligned and clamped together without glue and holes for two registering 3 8 inch dowels are bored through the upper block and partway into the lower one. 
The dowels allow the two sections of the hull to be taken apart and later place in exact alignment. The joint between the two blocks represents the water line of the hull. Next, the complete block is marked with a center line along the top and bottom, and the station lines are drawn across the top and down one side of the block. In tracing the outline of the deck template on the top of the block, carefully align the center line of the template with the center line on the block and draw around the template with a sharply pointed pencil. Make sure to check to see that the station lines correspond on both the template and on the block. It's a good idea to use tabs of cellulose tape to hold the template in position on the block. To draw the complete outline, simply flip the template over again, aligning it in the center line on the block. After the deck pattern is traced, the waterline template is also traced on top of the block in the same manner, positioning it in line with respective station points. Finally, the lower section of the two-part hull is removed and the same waterline template is traced onto the top of the lower section. Then the two blocks are placed together again for rough sawing. Rough sawing the blank to the general lines of the hull is done mostly easy with a bandsaw. The block is placed on its side and the deck shear line is cut first. Then the waste piece is tracked back to the reestablish the deck and waterline outlines. Next, with the block on its side, the bow and stern profile cuts are made, sawing carefully to line. After this, the two sections of the hull are again taken apart. It is important to note before sawing the deck outline that since the hull has a tumble home inward rake at station EE, the waterline outline must be followed at points where it overhangs the deck outline. If you have a disc sander, you can cut outside the line roughly and then bring to the block down to a line nicely on the sander. Finally, the waterline outline on the top of the lower section is cut and sanded to line. This establishes the exact shape of the hull and the waterline and also the depth that the hull is carved at the various stations along the waterline. These two sections of the hull now can be glued together permanently clamping them for a tight joint. Then different cardboard templates are required to check the progressive carving of the hull contour. These are given in actual size on page 184B. For tracing directly onto cardboard, each respective template being used at the same station point on each side of the hull. Supporting the hull in an inverted position for carving is best done by screwing a scrap block to the deck and then clamping the block in the bench vise. The rough hull is gradually brought down to the proper contour by carving it a little at a time and then checking repeatedly with the respective template. Start at station EE and work each way. In using each template, hold it vertically and even with the center line on the bottom of the hull and align it to the waterline mark on the template with the waterline of the hull. Several hand tools such as a small block plane, gauges, chisels, and wood rasps, as well as coarse sandpaper are all helpful in shaping the lines of the hull to coincide with the templates. Remember that the tumbler home at station EE makes the hull wider at the water line and then at the deck at this point try to obtain smooth flowing lines between station points. When the hull is carved to your satisfaction, Give it a good final sanding with 4-0 paper. Part 2 will describe cutting and various lifts comprising the superstructure, adding the propeller shaft housing and rudder, shaping the stacks, installing the anchors, and painting the hull with an initial coat of sealer. This will be continued next month. Ship's data. Length overall, 990 feet. Beam, 101 feet, 6 inches. Height from the keelson to stack, 175 feet. Number of decks, 12. Propulsion steam turbine. Horsepower is 118,500. Screws, quadruple, 9-foot blades. Speed, 30 knots plus. Gross tonnage is 51,500 tons. Passengers, 
2,000. Troops in wartime, 14,000. A crew of 1,000. Operated by the United States Lines. Built by the Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company, Newport News, Virginia. Designed by Gibbs and Cox Incorporated, Naval Architects, New York City. Keel laid February 8, 1950. Launched on June 23, 1951. And the maiden voyage was on July 3, 1952. The painting schedule, the hull or boot topping is red. The stripe above the boot topping is white. The hull above the stripe to the paint line is black. The hull above the paint line is white. The superstructure, the deck house's sides are white. The king posts, booms, spears, staffs, most on, most on stack is aluminum. Breakwater and hatch combings white. The radar tower is aluminum. Stack above the band is blue. The stack band is white, and the stack below the band to the paint line is red. The stack paint line to deck is white. Decks and tops of houses. The upper deck is dark green, the promenade deck and the sun deck dark green. The hatch covers forward are light gray. The hatch covers aft are dark green. Top of the forward deck houses are white. The sun deck is dark green. The sports deck is dark green. Navigating bridge, wheelhouse, after stack deck house, forward stack deck house, dark green forward and aft are white. Top of the wheelhouse, aft of rail area is dark green. The wheelhouse top within the rail area is white and the top of the houses is white. Fittings and miscellaneous. The rail cap is aluminum. Rail and stanchions other than the cap is white. The bits are black. The winches are medium gray. The capstans are medium gray. The anchors are black. The lifeboats are aluminum. The boat davits are white. Inclined ladders, stringers are white and the inclined ladders treads are dark green. Thank you.